Now we're digging into the personal things. Boys, we don't know what's happening. If this video doesn't get a million views, I'm firing Ren. Oh, it is coffee. You it knew is it. coffee. Yeah. I think my mom drinks that too. Is that kind of what you're telling me about? Yeah, it's uh, it's Cuban, shikari. Cuban espresso. Is that the shikari or no? No, I'm way off. It's just straight up Cuban. Espresso. So I feel like a uh, coffee with like shikari, like the New Orleans, comes in a case like that. Uh, yeah, you know I mean? a little bit. The Cafe du Monde coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it can. A similar-ish case. Can't even smell it. One more? No more? One more. I can. Actually, I think there's two more. I can crack it so you can smell it. It is amazing. It like gives me a headache. It gives me a weird body feel. Maybe I'm just sensitive. Yeah. I, there's some. I have the same issue with chocolate. If I eat too much chocolate, not even too much, like like a chocolate cookie with chocolate chips or just chocolate by itself, I get like a weird feeling. I, I can't explain it. Are you, a, are you like a dog? Maybe. I can do it if it's in like vanilla and I can do it if it's, if I have a glass of milk to like yeah. tone that stuff down. Um, but those are, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it. And normally I just tell people I don't like it and I don't try to explain because you sound like an insane human. Oh, perfect. Shall we stuff? Yes, yeah, so this is the test. We'll see if this works. Yeah, I think it'll work. We're going uptown. We're gonna have detachable shirts. Yeah, but don't be doing weird things with the detachable part, kids. I don't need to know kids. what's going on. Yeah. The curtain is closed. Yeah, kids, you fucking weirdos. I don't even know. Yeah. The ones we have right now are, are fine, um, but they're not awesome. What do we got? Bobs. And then, I think I've explained it, but we got 24 hour access here for like a premium membership, so you can come in. Uh, we're secure, we got cameras and stuff to make you feel safe. Um, and you just come through the front door and you can come in 24 seven. Um, we do have gym hours, so a membership's a little bit more affordable. Um, we have pretty decent hours, like six in the morning, 10 at night, if you wanna be around the crowds and whatever, but if you work night shift or you're a morning, morning person, then, you know, that's how it goes. Eventually we'll get like custom fobs and stuff, but we're ramping up, give us a sec. Right now we just got fobs for the cruise. Right. More? Oh, beautiful. I'll show the kids what they look like. Shampoo. Uh, you scared me for a sec. It's just <laughs> Just a little fobby. You literally just chuck it on the door. It's so easy. It's like, a, I guess you guys probably live in apartments or whatever. You literally just kind of bang one of these boys real quick. Beep. And it'll go. Unlock. Come to the gym. A light turns on. You got to come turn the lights on. Or later, but uh, last package showed up. So. I'm a strength coach, I'm into powerlifting, I'm into strength and conditioning, I'm into aesthetics, but we want this gym to be available for everybody and one of my biggest pet peeves, I think powerlifters, in specific, I always talk about how sore and tight and this and that, shout out to Alan for his tight video, uh, that they literally just don't warm up. It's literally that simple. Walk a little bit more, bike a little bit more. Um, so a big piece is to not only uh, create a space where everybody can train here, um, not, that's not a power lifter, you know, if you're into just general fitness, but um, to get some of these chubby bunnies uh, moving a little bit more. So, we got a rower. Mr. Concept. I'm gonna try to put it together. Let's see if I can put this together. I'm not that talented, but let's see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen. It feels like forever since we've spoken in this way. For some reason, when you're vlogging and I'm either around people or there's a, a stream of thought that I have talking to the camera, it feels way different than podcasting where I'm obviously talking to my guest or Jim McD, you know, my co-host versus doing this, a voiceover. It all just has such a different vibe to it I, I obviously it's the same thing i'm talking to a microphone to all you beautiful people that have supported me and loved me for so long that talented courageous kind people that you are that have talent that have that have supported me for so long but the the thought process by my head or, or how it feels I, I can't really explain it one day maybe i'll come to it but i can't really explain how it feels but it feels so, so different. Um, I think we've got a collaboration here, a uh, congregation here, a uh, metaphorical uh, soup, vegetable soup, a, a metaphorical f uh, frying pan mixed batch 
of workouts. Um, your boy's back on the grind. Uh, basically, my basic split is trying to go every other day. Um, so one session is bench, squat, focused, uh, rest day, uh, bench, squat, uh, 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 overhead press, and then a bunch of fluff, rest day, deadlift, squat, bench, a tiny bit of fluff, more isolation fluff. Um, and I know those pretty technical jargon. Hopefully you guys can keep up with what I'm putting down here. Um, but because life is a little hectic right now, and I know it's pretty crazy for a lot of us, but my schedule is just being thrown about in life. Uh, I have this good framework that I'm, I'm basing everything on, and I have a general outline of my progressions through the main lifts. And then the, the supplementary lifts are so easy. I just try to do an extra set, an extra rep, two and a half more pounds, something every session. Um, and I try to feel good. And right now, to be honest, um, I'm still a little achy and I don't feel as explosive. I kind of use the metaphor of like really slamming on the, on the gas pedal um, when I'm doing my compound lifts. I'm starting to get there. I can't really floor it or press the NOS or whatever Dom Toretto's doing to really haul ass. I'm not quite there. I'm not double clutch shifting or something, but I'm moving pretty good and I can I can push into the ground or push into the bar pretty good. You know, maybe maybe 70, 80%. Um you know, if you ever played any sports, basketball, football, baseball, it doesn't really matter, soccer, you kind of warm up and you can't like full sprint yet until you're fully warm. Um, how good of shape I'm in or how strong I feel kind of determines that on how hard I can kind of press into the bar. And it's just because I've been doing it so long. And maybe you feel it too, or maybe you guys don't, you know, consciously feel that, but maybe you're like, uh, oh, some days I feel strong and some days I feel explosive and some days I don't. To me, it's like literally how hard I can flex into a bar, um, squat bench dead overhead. And right now, even on the fully warm, fresh feeling days, Although these sets look pretty explosive, you're looking at right now, a little sumo day. These days, the, the bar is moving pretty good. I'm still not like fully flexed or pushing into it. Uh, I forgot what I finished with, but I think it's 545 for a single, um, a couple back downs. You saw my typical warm up uh, here at Third Street Barbell. We have a couple cardio machines because, you know, I'm kind of anti foam roll. I'm kind of anti, I want to say I'm anti mobility, but I'm anti mobility to the level I think the internet took it and a lot of you guys probably take it. There's no reason to be rolling around on the floor like a dead fish, like a Magikarp, if I will, for all my nerds out there for freaking hours, even, even 10 minutes, you know? Um, I think a lot of the chance chances you'll have change in your positioning and lifting will come from one, a good general warm up, which everyone's skipping on. So whether you want to jog, elliptical, walk, jump rope, do lunges, I don't care. I choose an assault bike or a step mill. Two, I think some kind of resistance or moving through uh, the plane of motion with a barbell will probably help you feel a little bit better and get into those better positions. So if you're having trouble hitting depth on squat, Take the barbell, take a plate, and pause down there or really take your time. Uh, here's session number two. So you guys saw a little bit of pulls. After that, I just, again, hit squats, bench, and then uh, light accessories. But here's big uh, – I think, I think I got a belt on. I don't know. But I'm here with my boy Big Dano. Um, you guys might know him as Stormcloud or Fat Dan. Uh, been my boy for a very long time. Uh, it was this very same building that I actually met him. I think he was 21 years old, uh, which is insane because the dude's 28. He's a business owner. Uh, he works multiple jobs. He's crushing life. Uh, and we never stayed out of touch by any means. He was just never around when I filmed. Uh, so everyone's like, oh, it's crazy like to see you with Dan and, and Filipino Thunder Marcus. But truth is, those guys have been around. Uh, we've, we've always grabbed lunch or we've... Um, went out to dinner or, or texted or played video games together um, forever. Maybe the Twitch fam might know a little bit more. We played with those guys. Uh, it's just that our schedules didn't line up and it's that we didn't work out together. And so when I was filming for YouTube, they weren't around as much. But uh, it's obviously great to have them in my life, to have my to have them have my back for so long. Uh, if Dan's 21, now he's 28, I guess seven years. He's been my boy for seven years. Um and now we're getting him back in the gym. So he's insanely busy, again, working kind of like two 40-hour jobs or so. So uh, I guess one a little bit more because he owns his own company. And for anyone that owns their own company or is a higher up in their company, you know it's not really a 40-hour work week. So the dude's busy, really busy. But uh, I'm going to try to 
help him find time to work out. And that's a topic for another day, another notion. But everyone's always saying, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Um, and we prioritize what we do. There's all these memes about, you know, hey, bro, will she text you back or something? I, I, I'm thinking off the top of my head. But I see all this stuff on Twitter and it really started to toxify my brain, dilute my IQ. Uh, but basically, you know, they're saying like, if it means something to you, you'll do it. And I feel it's the same way when you want to make time for friends or make time for the gym or make time for a new hobby or make time for work. I don't know what the heck this footage is. I'm trying to probably film myself squat and Dan's still here. He's 28 years old on Snapchat, swiping left and right and hot or not, cold or not, Tinder, whatever else app he's on. And I'm here trying to grab and grow the biggest quads the west coast has ever seen and it's kind of putting a wrench in my gears but we'll i digress um so basically began uh, i think he just needs you know a training partner and that's that goes to the environment and that goes to you know our 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 motto of good company uh, i think that i am disciplined enough as a coach and an athlete to train no matter what if i want to if i have a goal etc cetera, etc cetera. I would much rather meet up with my boys. That dude probably got like 20 swipes in right there. That was that was a swipe fest, by the way. Uh, I would much rather meet up with my boys, get a fun session in, joke about, push each other, help each other load the bar, give each other feedback, and grab food afterwards. It makes the whole experience a lot more enjoyable. Um, and at the end of the day, all we have on this planet is time, and I want to spend as much time as I can helping others and enjoying my own time. Um, and so if I can help my boys have fun, enjoy the space and also enjoy my training time better than I would on my own. Obviously I'd like a little session here and there. Even today, as I'm recording this, I did a bench session all by myself and it was, it was kind of enjoyable. I got to be in my head a little bit. I cranked up the music and I just kind of vibed out, um, heavy squat of the freaking comeback. We'll get to the comeback talk in a second, but I think that's 475 for a pretty easy dub. Um, so obviously I'll probably try to push into 495, 500 very, very soon uh, and start creeping my way back up to a 600 pound squat, which is kind of the ultimate goal of 2021. Everyone always asks me like the, the solid concrete goals. And normally I don't numbers wise. Um, I have too many other things going on, but now not that I don't, I probably have the most going on in my life that I've ever had. Uh, I just have a little bit of an itch. Maybe it's because I'm getting older or maybe it's because I feel good. Like I said, I can't fully explode into the bar, but I'm feeling pretty good that, that I want to kind of find these numbers. And so uh, pull above seven again, bench above four uh, and squat above six. Around 200 pound body weight would probably be the ultimate goal. I'm sitting around 220 in the mornings right now. Uh, and again, I'm only four weeks back into training after a full year off. So figuring that out. Basically, my training right now kind of looks like, uh, again, I told you the, the split in the beginning, but it's uh, a higher intensity with the barbell and the main lifts. I'm trying to work up to maybe a, a pretty good RPE 8 of, uh, you know, double, single, triple. Trying to progress that over time. So if I can, add weight and do a single. If I can't, I'll go slightly less weight and do a double or triple. Um, and then uh, only really one back down set. I'm not really handling that much volume uh, when it comes to my training. Um, I have more details in another video coming up. I appreciate you guys so much. New videos twice a week. Be sure to subscribe and check it out. I'm glad to be back. Thank you guys so much for the support.